Switching to Linux can be an exciting step, but unfortunately, there are many misconceptions that can steer newcomers in the wrong direction. You often hear things like, Linux isn't practical, it's just for hacking, or I tried Linux and wouldn't recommend it. However, if you dig deeper, you'll often find these opinions come from people who use distributions unsuited for everyday use among the most commonly misused and misunderstood distributions are Debian, Manjaro, and Kali Linux. Today, I'll explain why those of us who use Linux daily for general purposes steer clear of these distributions and why they're not suitable for beginners. Before diving in, let me clarify, operating systems are tools, not personal allegiances or battles to fight over. My focus here is on providing practical advice for casual users transitioning to Linux from Windows, not for server admins, penetration testers, or Linux enthusiasts experimenting with niche setups. Casual users deserve a seamless and supportive Linux experience, and not every distribution can deliver that. For a distribution to suit beginners, it should meet a few essential criteria. The setup process should be straightforward with guided steps and minimal technical input. Once installed, the system should work out of the box, including support for hardware drivers and a functional desktop environment without extra configurations. It should also strike a balance between stability and up-to-date software. Users don't need bleeding-edge features or ultra-stable server-level packages, just a functional, modern experience. Now let's discuss why Debian, Manjaro, and Kali Linux fail to meet these criteria for most casual users. Debian is one of the most famous Linux distributions, and for good reason. It's the foundation for hundreds of other distributions, including the popular Ubuntu and Linux Mint. However, Debian itself isn't ideal for beginners or general purpose use. Its commitment to stability comes at the cost of outdated software. For example, its desktop environments, kernel versions, and other key packages lagged significantly behind other distributions. While this ensures fewer bugs and greater reliability for servers, it can lead to frustrating limitations for desktop users, especially those looking for modern features or compatibility with newer hardware. Installing Debian can also be a challenge. The official ISO listed on their website lacks user-friendly features like a live environment, and the installer requires users to make technical decisions they might not understand, such as choosing mirrors or managing root passwords. This complexity is overwhelming for someone transitioning from Windows. Additionally, Debian doesn't prioritize proprietary software. While this aligns with their free software philosophy, it means users may need to manually install drivers or enable non-free repositories, which can be a hurdle for beginners. Manjaro markets itself as a more user-friendly version of Arch Linux, but in reality, it introduces unique challenges that make it unsuitable for beginners. Despite being built on Arch, Manjaro uses its own repositories, which can delay updates by weeks or even months. This defeats the purpose of choosing a rolling release distribution. As users miss out on Arch's cutting-edge updates, Manjaro also has a history of technical issues, including repository conflicts and problematic updates. For example, its integration with the Arch user repository, AUR, can lead to dependency problems, particularly when the AUR packages require new versions of software than Manjaro provides. Such scenarios can break the system, a nightmare for inexperienced. The distribution has also faced controversies with certificate expirations and mismanagement of their update tools, reflecting poorly on its reliability. Beginners seeking stability and simplicity are better off with other distributions like Linux Mint or Fedora. Kali Linux is another distribution often misrepresented, particularly as a hacker's OS. Designed specifically for penetration testing and cybersecurity professionals, it comes preloaded with tools for those purposes. However, this focus makes it unsuitable for general use. Kali inherits Debian's challenges such as outdated software and adds its own issues like unstable repositories that often require manual intervention. Having a suite of cybersecurity tools pre-installed isn't beneficial unless you understand how to use them. For beginners, these tools are unnecessary distractions. Unfortunately, Kali's popularity has perpetuated the myth that Linux is primarily for hacking. If you're genuinely interested in cybersecurity, it's better to learn the fundamentals and manually install the tools you need on a more user-friendly distribution. All three of these distributions, Debian, Manjaro, and Kali Linux, are often recommended by users who either misunderstand their purpose 
or fail to consider the needs of beginners. This leads to frustration for new users who try these distributions and conclude that Linux is impractical or overly complicated. If you're new to Linux, focus on distributions designed for everyday use like Linux Mint, Ubuntu, or Fedora Nobara. These systems prioritize ease of use, modern software, and hassle-free installation, everything a beginner needs to have a positive experience. If you would like to share your thoughts, have other recommendations, or disagree with any of these points, feel free to leave a comment.